everyone. Welcome to seventh grade science. I'm Miss Harrington. I teach seventh and eighth grade science at Phillips. I'm going to be teaching seventh grade science for the next six weeks with you. Um, just a few things to keep in mind. If you are using the packet for your assignments, that's what I'm going to be teaching off of and going over some questions and a few activities with you. So follow along with that. If you have it, go ahead and get it out. Also, one more thing. I have a live question poll for you to check for understanding. And to do that, if you have a device and you want to participate in that, you need to go to www.slido.com and use the code 5106. So if you'll go ahead and do that, when we get to those questions, you'll be ready to answer them. And it'll show you what everyone is answering live as people are answering it. So that should be fun to check for your understanding and just to see what everyone else is thinking. Okay, we're going to get started with structure and movement, which is going to cover our skeletal system and hopefully we're going to get to our muscular system today. At the beginning of your packet for each section, it gives you a before you read. And that's simply to kind of get your brain going. So if you look at these questions, it says bones, or sorry, statements. It says bones protect internal organs. So the idea here is before you read this whole section is to decide if you agree or disagree with that. So if you agree, put an A in the box. If you disagree, put a D. The second one is bones do not change during a person's lifetime. So again, if you agree, put an A. If you disagree, put a D. And after we go through this section, we're going to come back and see what we think after we've gone through it. Another thing that could be helpful, I'm going to hit the, the high points for each of these slides, and it's following straight along in your packet. So use a highlighter, a pencil, do something to kind of hit those high points with me so that way you're really getting to understand what's going on here. Okay, we're gonna start with the skeletal system. First, we're gonna talk about the functions of the skeletal system. First, we need to know what the skeletal system is, and it contains bones as well as several other things of your body, but you have over 200 parts to your skeletal system. The first function we're gonna talk about is support. So if you imagine having some cubes of gelatin, if you stack that gelatin, it's not gonna be very sturdy. I also brought some little figurines with me, and now keep in mind I'm not an artist, I'm a science teacher, but this is just simple modeling clay, and this little human figure doesn't have anything other than just the clay. And so as you can see, if I try to make this figurine stand up, there's a lot of bending going on, and pretty much hits face first. So that's the idea of our skeletal system, it gives us support so we don't do that. If you add some toothpicks to the human, it's easier to get the person to stand. Now it's not gonna stand perfectly because it's clay, but that gives you the idea of what our skeletal system do does to support us. So it helps us stand straight and it also helps us keep stable. Okay, moving on to our second function is movement. So the great thing about our skeletal system is our bones are attached to muscles which help us move. So not only can we bend, but we can lift and we can move our arms and legs and sit down and stand up because of our movement. Then we have protection. So if you think about your brain, your brain is protected because you have your skull or your cranium. And a little demonstration I want to do here I have two eggs. I have one in a container with just the egg and nothing else in the container. And I'm gonna close the lid on that egg. Okay, so it's in the container. But then also I have a container with water in it and the egg is going to go into the water. And I'm going to cover that one as well. And just to give some extra support, an extra cushion, and also to keep the water from, from coming out, I'm going to put masking tape around this particular container. So this is kind of giving you the idea of your head, your skull, protecting your brain. Now, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna drop this container without the water and without the tape first. 
Okay? And then also, I'm going to drop this one. So you can see how it bounced a lot. That's protecting the egg itself. Now, what happened here, the egg was supposed to crack. But you didn't have all that support. You can see how it hit a lot harder. So without our skull, we're not going to have our brain protected. So if you ever take a fall or you play sports and get hit in the head, it's good to have that skull to protect your brain. Notice here, and we can double check and see if the egg stayed together. The bounciness gave it more protection and more support. Now, if you try this at home, get your parents' permission because it can get messy. But again, our egg is protected, so the water and the tape gave it that extra protection. So our skull and our bones really do protect our bodies. They also protect all the other inside organs of our bodies. Think about your ribs and your sternum uh, protecting your inside organs like your heart, your lungs, your stomach, etc. Okay, production and storage. So for this part, we have a few parts to our bones that are really important. Our red blood cells, which make, I'm sorry, our red bone marrow, which makes red blood cells. And then we also have a storage marrow, the yellow bone marrow, which stores fat for us. And then also those parts of the bones can create calcium and store calcium for our body. And calcium is really important to get to certain parts of our body. So bones make sure that that happens. It produces and it stores red blood cells, yellow, um, I'm sorry, fat in our yellow bone marrow, and also calcium. All right, this is where we get to do the live poll. If you're watching and have your, your device ready at slido.com, you have this code to put in. And the question is, how do bones act as a support system? So let's see. I'm going to give you all about 10 seconds to see if anyone is, is submitting their answer. And let's just see what happens. So how do bones act as a support system? Okay, so no answers have come up, but let's just go ahead and talk about this. Um, it's really important for our bones to support our body to help us stand straight up, to keep us from falling to the ground like the clay model without any um, toothpicks in it. And then also remember to bend and to move our body. We also need the support of our bones. Okay. The second question, how does the skeletal system help a person play a musical instrument? So in the packet, you had a picture of a person playing a, mu a musical instrument. And if you think about talking about the movement function, remember we have muscles attached to our bones. And so because of that, we can lift and we can move our bones in different ways. So that's really important for being able to play a musical instrument. Okay. We'll come back to this question later. Let's talk about the structure of bones. A bone is an organ made of living tissue. So we've talked about at the beginning of the year how the smallest living thing is a cell. And a bunch of cells working together makes a tissue. Bones are the perfect example of a living tissue. So there are also two types that we're going to talk about. First, compact bone. And if you notice here in the figure, our compact bone is here in the arm. And it's also going to be found on the hard outer area of your long bones. Long bones would be like your arm, your leg bone, longer bones like that. And it's really thick and dense. And if you think about needing that structure and support, that helps with that. Your spongy bone is exactly what it sounds like, spongy. Remember, spongy ha sponges have pores. And those are little holes within the sponge. Well, same thing for the spongy bone. It's going to have little holes throughout. It's not going to be as dense and compact as compact bone. Also inside of our bones, we have bone marrow. I talked about this a little bit with production and storage. Bone marrow is really important. Our red bone marrow makes red blood cells. And that's important because that takes oxygen throughout our body, and we have to have oxygen. Um, as far as the yellow bone marrow, 
we have fat storage. And fat storage is important. We'll talk about in just a second um, some key things about having fat and how it helps our body stay at a regular temperature. But it helps in making sure that your body stays at a good temperature and also just making sure that you have that extra fat in case your body needs to transport it somewhere else. All right, a few more things, the structure of bones. We have cartilage. You've probably heard of cartilage before. Cartilage is really important because it keeps our bones from rubbing together. And if you think about it, it probably wouldn't feel that good to have your bones rubbed together. So that cartilage acts as basically a protector from the ends of your bones when they connect. Periosteum are basic, it's the membrane around your bone. So You've heard membranes before, how cells have membranes. Well, so do bones. And this membrane is important because it can help create new bone cells. And new bone cells is a really good thing to have, not only because we grow every single day all the way through adulthood, but also if you break a bone, it's really cool to have periosteum help make some more bone cells for you. Okay, this is in the packet. If you want to go along with me here, it's just asking you to circle the red bone marrow. You could even go through and circle the yellow bone marrow just so you can see where they are as far as the bone goes. Okay, <clears throat> again, if you're following along with Slido.com and you're ready to answer this question, this should pop up on your phone or your device, the question itself, and it should come up with some answer choices for you. What is the difference between red bone marrow and yellow bone marrow, okay? And just to talk about the differences one more time, red bone marrow makes red blood cells, and then the yellow bone marrow stores fat. All right, formation of bones. So before you were born, your skeleton was mostly made of cartilage, and you still have cartilage, seventh graders, if you're watching this, even younger, even eighth and ninth graders, all the way till your adulthood, you still have cartilage in place of bone, but eventually that cartilage is gonna turn into bone tissue. So you have what we call growth plates, and when you have an immature bone here, you're gonna have way more growth plate at the end of those bones because you still need to grow. Your bones still need to lengthen, in other words. So as you see here, the growing bone, the bone is going to continue to get longer and the growth plate a little shorter, okay? And then as you can see here, a mature bone has very little growth plate. So if you've ever broken something in your hand or your wrist and you heard of someone doing that as well, but they broke their growth plate, typically they're gonna have to get some pins put through in order to keep that growth plate together because that growth plate needs to heal correctly so that way when it turns into bone eventually, your bones are still the right structure that they need to be. So that's one thing, if you've ever seen people that had um, some pins through their arm and a big cast around it, that's what was going on there. They broke their growth plate. So just to go over the formation of bones one more time, you have cartilage, mainly cartilage for your skeleton as an infant. Eventually that cartilage is going to be replaced by bone and remember when we talked about periosteum helps create bone cells. So that's where this comes in too, not just for broken bones. Okay, also growth plates in long bones become bone tissue eventually. And this continues all the way through adulthood. All right, a few more parts to the skeletal system. We have joints and a joint joins the two bones together. So we have the cartilage that keeps a buffer between them from rubbing together, but we also have a joint to fully join the bones together. Ligaments are tissues that connect bones to other bones. Now we have two types of joints. We have immovable joints, which explains itself. They can't move. For example, your skull. Your skull is not moving around as far as protecting your brain goes, it's not moving different places. And that's probably a good thing because we want our brain to be fully protected at all times. But also we have movable joints, which you are probably familiar with because you can move, you can sit down, you can bend your knee, you can move your arm. All of these are movable joints. It just allows your body to move. 
And there are different types of movable joints. We have ball and socket, we have hinge, and we also have pivot. Ball and socket is important in your hips and shoulders. It allows bones to rotate in nearly all directions. So I grew up playing softball and I like to pitch. So it's really important because I can actually move my arm in a circle, but also if I need to go and catch a ball, I can move outward rather than front and back. So ball and socket is really important. Hinge is the bone that can move back and forth in a single direction. So like your fingers, your elbows, and knees. Pivot is where bones can rotate. So like your lower arm, you can turn your arm back and forth. It's rotating. So those are your three different types of movable joints. Okay. Um, again, here's a few questions to check for your understanding. How do ligaments and cartilage help your skeletal system function? Well, remember, our cartilage is important because it keeps our bones from rubbing together. Our ligaments actually connect bone to bone. Okay, where in your body are hinge joints? So if we go back a few slides, you can see where fingers, elbows, and knees are your hinge joints. A few things about bones. You can injure your bones. You probably, most of you have probably experienced this at some point because kids will be kids. But because bones are made of living tissue, they can be injured. And if they break, yes, it's going to hurt really badly, but that's okay because your bone tissue will actually create new bone cells to heal it. But it's super important that if a bone is broken, that it is stabilized in the correct position. So when those bone cells do create, they will actually connect the bone the way it's supposed to be. Arthritis is another type of disease. You've probably heard of this and kids, you're probably thinking that's for old people. Well, typically it does happen in uh, adults 50 or older, but it, all it is is just the inflammation of the joint. As you can see here, this is a healthy bone and a healthy joint where the cartilage is. But we have the inflammation of cartilage, and inflammation you can tell because it's red here of the joint. That would be an example of arthritis. Osteoporosis is another disease that you can have where the bones aren't really producing what they need to to stay strong they can become brittle and break a lot easier. But how can we prevent these things from happening? Well, you can stay healthy with a healthy diet and healthy exercise. Now, when I say exercise, I don't mean go lifting thousands of pounds of weight, just getting out and moving, going for a walk, a run, maybe playing a sport. Keeping your body moving is really important for your skeletal system. A healthy diet. So not always eating junk food, having some real food is a good example because your body can produce that vitamin D, which can help with calcium as well. Now, this word homeostasis, you've probably heard at some point during the year, and all this means is your body staying stable, and it's really important for your skeletal system to be stable, and what that means is you can respond to a stimulus, so like if there's a mosquito flying around me, I can either move away or I can swat it. Being able to respond to that is responding to a stimulus. Okay, and then also your body supplying calcium to where it needs to go. That's another thing that's really important to keep your body stable at a place where it's happy. Okay, what are some ways to help a fractured bone heal? Well, remember keeping it stabilized is really important in a nice, the correct position stabilized so that way it heals the correct way. Okay, and how does the skeletal body help maintain homeostasis? Remember it produces calcium and also um, it helps with, it, it responds to a stimulus. Now at the end of this section it gives you an after you read page and this page part of it is looking at the mini glossary and we've talked about these terms throughout this whole section. So Go through, make sure you're understanding them. See if you can write a sentence or two explaining what these definitions are telling you in your own words. Also, there's a diagram for you to go through, and it wants you to label the different parts of a bone. Now, if you remember, we looked at this exact diagram, so you can use your packet to help you go through. Going back to the after you read, Remember we looked at these statements and I told you to put an A if you agree and a D if you disagree.
Go back and read. See if you change your mind. Put an A if you agree with it in the after box or a D if you disagree. And that covers our skeletal system. So if you're following along in the packet, I've gone over every single thing for the skeletal system, all the questions on the sides of the pages, and the last page to go over everything that we talked about. So if you're going through that, your minor and major grades that your teachers are giving, you're gonna do awesome at it. Just remember that your teachers miss you and we love you and we are really excited to eventually see you back one day. Stay healthy and join me next week to talk about the muscular system.